What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on the channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys, I want to talk about sustainability for the team, or at least one unexplored avenue that makes a lot of sense. It's just we've never had it. And that is market transactions. Now, Here's the thing, the way that the market fees currently work, I believe it's a 6% fee, 2% of which is burned, so that's great for the ecosystem, and then 4% of which goes to whoever sold the card, right, or whoever provided the platform, meaning that if Peak Monsters, for example, were on the website right now, Peak Monsters sold it, they would get, you know, that 4%, Monster Market, Aqualus, like there's a bunch of different markets, including the Splinterlands website itself. But from my understanding, and if I'm wrong on this, please let me know, from my understanding, the team doesn't get anything unless it's sold on the website itself. And we've always seen the team tend to lag behind in features and, and you know, kind of quality of life things when it comes to purchasing, right? People like Peak Monsters, people like the 3% the cash back or whatever it is that you get with some of the other um, avenues. So most of the time, even for myself, I don't do any purchasing, whether that's renting or sorry, any transactions, whether it's purchasing or renting on the Splinter Lens website, I'll usually go into one of the other arenas for that, one of the other platforms. So my thought process was, okay, I, I know we had an overhaul to the the fees a little while back, and they were raised, and we kind of you know set some baselines, which is good, but I'm, I'm wondering if it would be worth revisiting where instead of that 4% going to whoever sold it, I think we should take at least 1% and give it to the team. Since a lot of this stuff is still running on the team's servers, it's just everybody else is, you know, that has a nicer kind of layout or lay uh, layover on top of whatever the team is doing on the back end. So in that way, it's like, okay, well, the team should be getting 1%, right? And then you can give 3% to all of the other markets. I think that would be fair in the long run. Granted, I, I know maybe the markets, uh, people who run these markets might disagree, but how much does 1% actually translate to, right? I don't, I'm not trying to increase. I'm not saying we should go from 6% to 7%. I'm saying that we should, uh, you know, keep the 2% burn because that's good for the ecosystem, but then also have, you know, instead of the 4% going to whoever uh, is the market that sells it or the platform that sells it, have it be 3% and then take that 1% and provide it to the team as, you know, some kind of uh, income for them, right? Something that they could use outside of just getting paid whenever their platform sells it, which again, I said, again, I think is rare based on what I was saying earlier. So how much would that actually net the team if this is something worth doing? Well, if you go down here, right, you can see uh, not token prices, but market on this dashboard from Peak Monsters, you can see over the past month, right over the past 30 days, we've done $334,000 worth of volume, which would mean we get like 1%. The team would get Three thousand dollars, thirty, uh, you know, thirty-three hundred dollars, not much, right, in the grand scheme of things for for a month of work. But what's interesting is if if we go out six months, and unfortunately this is the farthest out that we have. If you go out six months, you can see that there were periods of major market transactions. And we go through a lot of these all the time, right? This is actually capturing a lot of what ended up happening after Rebellion came out, uh, rather than you know maybe before Land 1.5, which was in November. So that was maybe like seven-ish months ago at this point. So there was a lot of market activity there. But even still, check this out. The volume for the past six months is 3.4 million. Now you take 1% of that, and that's $34,000 over the last six months. I mean, I'm not saying that the market is always going to be whatever, but I do think we will have periods of higher activity and periods of lower activity. Obviously, we're in a period of lower activity now. But if you just extrapolate that out, $34,000, we'll just round up to $35,000 every six months is $70,000 a year. That's nothing to sniff at, right? Like, I, I, again, it's not going to save the company. And I'm, I'm not saying that this is the way that, you know, the company is going to fund itself moving forward. There's always going to be, you know, other things that the team does. They have to provide value in different ways. But this is this seems like an easy, almost no-brainer idea for the team to have as a way to pull in 70K, which, uh, again, I, I don't know. You know, I'm not saying that that's the salary of a developer, but I am saying 70K could be the salary for something or pay for something. Uh, it's not insignificant. Yeah, I know the team would have to pay tax, company would have to pay taxes on that and all that. But my point is that it's not an insignificant amount. And if the team is successful in having another bull run kind of moment similar to 2021, 
and we do get a lot of transactions, we do get a lot of market activity, whether that's the launch of a new set, whether that's the launch of promo cards or land 1.7, 1.8, whatever it is, as we go forward, I mean, this will be uh, almost like a great income stream for the team to have and use at their disposal, right? Now, the one thing that's tough about this is, well, I, I guess, you know what, never mind. I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> I was going to say that, that the team would have to sell that DEC that comes in technically, right? But at the same time, anybody else who's receiving that 4% fee would be selling it as well since that's part of their income. So it's somewhat of a moot point. So I'm just thinking that through, I, I think that it's not insignificant for us to maybe revisit the market fees. Again, not uh, not increase them overall for people, but potentially decrease it for you know some of the other the platforms out there and give the team 1% of everything that's happening. And to, to cap this video, right, to close out, this is how it works for most other NFTs, right? There's always some kind of royalty that is involved with that. So if you were to go to more traditional NFTs on that you buy on OpenSea or whatever, the teams are earning something from that. And it's usually not 1%. It's usually significantly higher than that. So I know that these aren't traditional NFTs, right? They're not, they don't live on the blockchain itself. They live on a second layer, uh, which is the Splinter Lens website. But I, I think that it should have the same kind of uh, it should have the same kind of mechanism where there should be something where every time, you know, NFTs are bought and sold, there should be something going back, a, a royalty almost to the creator for these NFTs. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Very curious to see how people feel about that and if they would be willing to revisit a proposal to do that. Again, I, I think it's not insignificant in terms of the amount of money over the course of a year. And, um, yeah, it might be something that we could put in to help the team out, especially as we are approaching what will hopefully be a fun bull run for crypto. But that's all I have for you guys in this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all in the next one and see you around the game. Take care.